Welcome to the PI Guy, tips, tricks, and advice for professional private investigators just like you. Do you want to know what it really takes to do TSCM bug sweeps? Well, hang on. That is what we will discuss in just a moment. My name is John Morris. I am a licensed private investigator here in Colorado as well in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Before we delve into the world of TSCM bug sweeps, go down below, hit that thumbs up button, click on that subscribe button, it really helps the channel out a lot. So what is TSCM, you ask? This acronym stands for Technical Surveillance Countermeasures. I often describe it as the use of specialized counter surveillance equipment to locate hidden electronic surveillance devices, such as hidden cameras, voice recorders, bugs, or other eavesdropping devices like well, all of these. TSCM is often needed in the government world, the corporate world as well, regarding domestic matters, including divorce, child custody, fraud cases, things like that. Do you want to know the costs involved in situations that require a bug sweep? Well, hang on. First things first, hidden surveillance equipment is cheap, and I mean dirt cheap, folks, and it's very easy to obtain. Let's take a look at some of the cheap spy products out there. In doing just a quick internet search, I saw these four items come up right here. First is a 1080p high-def hidden wireless camera with full high-def night vision. These types of cameras can be as small as the size of a quarter. This one happens to be about 17 bucks. The second one is even smaller. This spy cam has a screw in it to hide the camera and it's only 40 bucks. These first two can be standalone or they can be put in just about anything to help conceal and disguise them. Spend a little more money and you can get one of these bad boys, the Wi-Fi light bulb camera with night vision, pan and tilt, 360 degree field of vision, and it's only about 50 bucks. It also works as a real light bulb. The last one, another one for under 50 bucks, looks very innocuous, just a simple USB wall charger. Even works as a charger, so if somebody plugs something into it, they can even charge the device. This one happens to have audio and motion detection to record only when there is activity in the immediate area. Now, how do you go about detecting these devices, or any bugs for that matter? First, let me say it's not easy, nor is it cheap, to obtain high-quality TSCM equipment. Sure, you can go online and you can find cheaply priced devices like these. Check them out. Uses active laser scanning and passive scanning. The best bug detectors around. This quality RF detector alerts you when hidden cameras, listening devices, or cell phones are operating. These are flying off the shelf. Limit five per customer. Great sales pitches, right? But do they live up to their promises? Folks, you get what you pay for. That is plain and simple. One of these descriptions pretty much sums it all up for all of these type of cheap equipment. This quality RF detector alerts you when hidden cameras, listening devices, or cell phones are operating. This is what they are, folks. They are RF radio frequency detectors. They are not bug detectors. There is no such thing as a one thing does it all bug detector. Of course, they might detect some bugs if they're transmitting a radio frequency. One of the biggest limitations on these devices is that they only search for radio frequencies and even then they have a limited capability. They may advertise a range going up to 6 gigahertz. However, what they don't tell you is the frequency scan spread. What that means is how far away is each frequency that is scanned. Between 20 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz, there are 80 kilohertz. Most of these lower priced units, as well as mid-level units in the $400, $800 range, do not scan each hertz or even a kilohertz. They may go every 1,000 kilohertz, which is an entire megahertz between scan. There are 6 million hertz going up to 6 gigahertz. 6 million, and each of those hertz can be transmitting data for a bug. So if the so-called bug detector goes from 0 to 1,000 kilohertz, or 1 megahertz, then goes to 2 megahertz, then to 3 megahertz, all the way to 6 gigahertz with a spread of 1,000 kilohertz at a time, what happens? It scans about 600,000 frequencies, which is a lot but that is out of 6 million frequencies. So if a bug is transmitting at frequency of 1.457 gigahertz, simply put, these cheap bug detectors will not detect that bug. To further complicate things, these low cost bug detectors are simply just radio frequency detectors. You and I are bombarded with thousands of radio signals every second of our life, wherever we go, every day, all day long, even right now. Here is a typical picture 
from a spectrum analyzer showing all of the RF signals with a 1 gigahertz in the middle and a span of only 11.18 megahertz. Each of those spikes you see is an actual radio signal. The height of the spike is relative to the power of the signal at that point. All of these radio frequencies are also bouncing off of everything. This further complicates the entire process of finding an RF bug. A local radio station or TV station has a signal that can and will bounce off of things like curtain rods, electric motors, um, fan motors, refrigerators, vacuums, heater vents, and other metal objects made out of aluminum, copper, or any kind of metal. We always have customers tell us they purchased one of these bug detectors online and they know exactly where it is. They just can't find it. Then when we get there, they show us where they believe that the bug is and it's always near one of these reflective devices and usually there is no bug or at least no bug where they thought it was. Now let's discuss how to do bug sweeps correctly. Really quick, go down below, click that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button for me. Now to do a TSCM sweep correctly, you must have the correct tools and the correct training. We use devices from companies like REI, Research Electronics International, which are headquartered and manufactured right here in the good old USA in the state of Tennessee. REI is not a sponsor for this channel. I do not get anything from them for mentioning them. Our equipment costs folks are in the tens of thousands of dollars, not a few hundred dollars. And our training is in the hundreds of hours for every technician. We use equipment like the Andre, the Advanced Near Field Detection Receiver. As you can see in this picture, the Andre has many types of antenna that are used to detect many differing types of frequencies. The Andre is also referred to as a near field detector. It is designed to look specifically for devices near to it, which allows for much fewer false positives while we're doing a sweep. It also helps us identify exactly what type of signal it sees, where it is, and what power that signal has. We also use the Orion from REI, which is a nonlinear junction detector. This device looks like a metal detector, however, there is a huge difference. The Orion is looking for certain things inside electronics, such as transistors, resistors, capacitors, things like that. This again is looking for devices close to it that may be hidden inside of walls, inside of furniture, inside of toys, handbags, and other items. Many times a bug is found that is referred to as a drop device. The individual comes into the area, hides a non-transmitting recording device somewhere, then later comes back and retrieves it. These are more common and there is no way an RF bug detector will find it because it is not transmitting a signal. It's just sitting there recording. Another piece of equipment that we use is a spectrum analyzer. A spectrum analyzer looks at the entire RF spectrum regardless of where it is. In utilizing this, we can look for spikes in particular frequencies in case something is bursting a transmission. Bursting means it just sends out the info on a schedule once every 15 minutes or once an hour or at a specific time. If a bug is bursting when you go by with an RF detector, it will not detect it unless it is that exact time when it's scheduled to burst. Other pieces of equipment we use are things such as a flare to look for heat signatures inside walls and furniture, inspection cameras to look into holes and vents and other places that you can't see inside, camera detectors which can grab an unencrypted video feed and other devices. We also have equipment that can analyze physical phones and physical phone lines, and we can inspect computers and cell phones for potential bugs. To top it all off, like I said, we have hundreds of hours of professional training for using our equipment and locating and identifying bugs. As you can see, folks, a TSCM bug sweep is not just this. A bug sweep looks a lot more like this. And that is not even all of the equipment that we have. And we go into every sweep with two to three technicians to make sure that we cover everything. I'm sure that you probably have a lot of questions. Just go down below in the comments, put your questions. If you happen to be doing bug sweeps, let me know about that. Let me know what equipment that you use. And remember folks, go down, hit that thumbs up button, click on that subscribe button. And remember folks, remember folks, stay safe out there.